episode of Crypto Marketing Insights. I'm Yasha Harari. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin and uh, some things in the Bitcoin community that I think are of interest to marketers, um, whether you're you know, pushing a straight Bitcoin project or frankly, even if you're pushing an offshoot, you know, or even a even a fork or you know even a different coin I mean, it could be ethereum or any erc token if you're marketing a crypto project uh, then this uh, episode is really uh, for you uh, but especially if you have an interest specifically in bitcoin uh, which is after all the uh, king of the hill if you, you know so to speak or the the 500 pound gorilla when it comes to crypto right at least for now right it has been and then continues to be um, maybe that will change in the future maybe not who knows but um, for now Bitcoin is the dominant crypto obviously and therefore I'm going to cover some things related to crypto marketing specifically for Bitcoin in this episode so if you haven't been here before and you're uh, into crypto marketing then by all means uh, you know sign up or like or whatever you know hit subscribe all those things that they like you to do for the algorithm I personally don't care if you do it or not uh, what I care is that you only subscribe if you actually want to get this content I talk about marketing I talk about crypto marketing um, and uh, yeah that's very niche so if you're into that awesome please sign up um, and apart from that, uh, what other news? Uh, uh, yes, uh, in the crypto news space in general, obviously, you know, the price of Bitcoin and all that stuff, uh, generally it's of interest because it's moving up and down. It's quite volatile, but hey, this is, you know, this is cryptocurrency. What do you expect? It is volatile. Um, when it's not moving, people are complaining because it's not moving. When it's moving like crazy, people are complaining because it's moving like crazy. Um, if you expect it to move like a traditional asset, you're in the wrong market. So don't <laughs> expect it to move like a traditional asset. Uh, I'm not a market anal you know, TA professional advisor or anything like that. I'm not a financial advisor, obviously. I talk about marketing, so that's really what I'm looking at. Um, and I do cover trading related stuff but only as it relates to marketing uh, so to the first point of this uh, video uh, Bitcoin crypto marketing specifically right everybody always says ah, oh, there's no corporate headquarters for Bitcoin well everybody always says there's no no uh, no management office for Bitcoin there's no Bitcoin marketing department well it's kind of funny people say that um, because the whole point of Bitcoin is that it doesn't need such a thing. And um, if you look at one of the reasons why it is such a vital asset to the crypto ecosystem, right? And one of the reasons it is a very strong tool uh, for marketers, if used correctly, is precisely because it's open source, right? You have access to things like um, the network, the protocol, the payment gateway, the payment system, the wallet, right? Full nodes. You can be a miner. You can be a node to verify transactions. You can, you know, do all kinds of things with Bitcoin, and it's all open source. Now, does it have rapid development on a daily basis, changing things and adding features and functions and bells and whistles like other cryptos do? No. Right. One of its limitations is its lack of features and bells and whistles, but that is exactly one of its core strengths as well. And people will say, what are you talking about? Software development needs to evolve. You can't just stay with old things. Yes, software development and software development does evolve. And no, you can't just keep old software running forever because people's devices upgrade and therefore you need to upgrade your software. But the protocol layer level, right, can last a very, very long time and be efficient for a very, very long time. It doesn't matter if the protocol layer is fast or slow because there are, 
you know, additional things on top of it, just like there are additional layers on top of many other cryptos, including ETH with all the you know, maker, maker die currency that it creates. Uh, and then all the different uh, the layer of user aggregators and the layer of applications and all the different layers you stack on top of ETH. You know, you can get three or four layers deep by the time you're using some DeFi app where you've locked up your, you know, your stake of coins. And what that means is that if you're marketing a third or fourth layer application on top of ETH, um, that doesn't stop your coders or developers from developing that, right? Just because it's a third or fourth or second layer or even a first layer. It doesn't stop you from developing it just because it's not ETH, right? ETH itself will continue to develop just like Bitcoin will continue to develop. There is a core of development happening for Bitcoin. It's just, yeah, they're slower and more cautious than other cryptocurrencies. And why? Well, because you want the most reliable network in cryptocurrency to be reliable, right? You want the most open decentralized network. And you can argue to me to the moon about how China or some governments control huge chunks of it. Fine. That's not the point of this discussion. Bitcoin itself as a protocol is open source, right? The network is decentralized, right? Again, you can say, well, a few, few hands control most of the mining and most of the coins and most of the this. Yeah, okay. But it's still decentralized because the majority of the you know companies that own those huge chunks of it, right, the large miners, actually they're mining pools. And who owns the mining pools? Well, the people that put their money into it. So if you have a gigantic mining pool owned by some company with a million people each, you know, having a, a chunk of that coin that of that uh, cloud that mining cloud or mining pool then that mining pool isn't all owned by the company right the company owns the mining pool platform but the actual money in it is owned by the people who have put money in it so whatever money they've put into it yeah they own that right whatever they, whatever they get out from the mining and whatever fees they collect as a host platform they get that but those are usually fairly minimal and pretty much they're there to cover cost or help cover cost and a little bit of whatever, um, you know, and, and obviously make their profit. Uh, but the majority of the money people put into mining pools or mining clouds, the legitimate ones, of course, those are that, that money is owned by the people putting the money in. That's how that works. So the argument that Bitcoin is not decentralized because there's a few huge mining pools um, that own a majority of the coin being mined, um, or the create a majority of the own being mined, that is just an invalid argument because those coins are not owned all by that pool. They're owned by and far by the majority, or by the people you know who have bought into that pool. Now, you could argue, well, if they don't have the Bitcoin on their private keys, if they don't withdraw their key, you know, their, their, their Bitcoin to their private keys from the mining pools, as long as that money is in the mining pool, that mining pool platform host really owns the majority of it because it's on their, uh, you know, wallet or something. Well, again, if you are with a legitimate pool, uh, then you should be able to remove your Bitcoin to your private keys without a problem. And it should be your keys and your Bitcoin. So that is not, again, a valid argument. Um, one of the you know, additional strengths uh, that Bitcoin has being open, right, as a marketer, is that you can therefore build strategies, platforms, business models, tools, applications, um, you know, content, all kinds of things you can do with Bitcoin that you simply cannot do with other coins. And the main reason for that is, first of all, there are already millions of wallets using Bitcoin, right? And there's many cryptocurrencies who do not have millions of wallets of users. And Bitcoin, while many of the wallets, you know, something like two thirds of the wallets actually have been dormant for the past year, for at least a year, um, recent studies have shown, um, it is, you know, something like 12 to 13 million of the Bitcoins have not moved in the past year. Think about that. There's only like, there's 18 million of them 
and it's assumed you know that have been mined out of the 21 million and it's assumed that four or five million are lost some people say as much as six million are lost well if there's 12 or 13 million wallets with bitcoin in them that haven't moved in a year and you know yeah sure they don't all have a bitcoin in them um but some of them have much more than a bitcoin right um you can imagine how tight the supply is and um that it means that you can market bitcoin knowing that you have a very significant built-in uh, environment of people who hold the coin and they don't just sell it and dump it um they could but they don't right why not well because they believe it's going to go higher right uh, for them you know, or, or they've lost access to it but those who hold their keys and don't sell them why do they hold them they only hold it because they think it's going to go higher you know, even if they believe in the technology if you believe in the technology but you think the price is going to go lower you would still sell it right because then when the price gets lower to where you think it's going to be then you would buy it back so the audience of bitcoin users of hodlers right they're really they're they they want to see the price go up right that just who doesn't right everyone wants to see the price go up in an asset they in an asset they invested in but hodlers specifically their main interest seems to be um the rising price and uh the mass adoption right and waiting for the mass adoption to see the rising price right which means they're going to hold on to that sucker until it is well and truly worth what they think it is and who knows how long that could be that could be six months that could be a year that could be five years that could be ten years it doesn't really matter right those who believe and those who have decided this is the thing i'm going to buy into and hold it um this is the new goal this is the new whatever they want to call it right um those people are very much in line with the thinking of um, this asset will have a value in the future and even though it's intangible uh, physically it is something that has real value uh, and the ability to you know, store um, real transaction history that is immutable and uncensorable and all that good stuff uh, has tremendous value to people much more than people uh, who uh, you know mock it uh, actually tend to admit right like the Noriel Rubinis of the world or the you know, whoever whatever other naysayer you want to say uh, Peter Schiff you know of the world they, those guys they just they will not admit that Bitcoin um, is a transformational technology and it is right it absolutely we would not be sitting here talking about Bitcoin if it was not a transformational technology there are many technologies in the world I don't talk about all of them right um, I may think about a lot of them <laughs> more than I video cast or broadcast but I don't talk about all of them and that's for a reason um, because they're not all worthy right of constant focus and attention and uh, production of new ideas um, Bitcoin however is right as a marketer it gives you so many more abilities than before Bitcoin existed you know again yeah I know other cryptos whatever on this video we're talking about Bitcoin Bitcoin lets you accept a cryptocurrency which if you set it up correctly right can let you accept values right money whatever you want to call it currency cryptocurrency um, in exchange for goods services products whatever you're selling um, or whatever you're accepting money for um, in ways that you simply could not do before right it's not just the idea that you can send money to anyone without a third party involved which by the way in and of itself is it is a transformational technology of many generations not just something that happened and oh we'll forget about it in 20 years no 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 like cryptocurrency the blockchain concept which wasn't first created with bitcoin right but 
Bitcoin is the first successful version of it because of all of the components being looped together and working properly together. Um, it is reliable and dependent. It is all of those high qualities, you know, uh, divisible, portable, uncensorable, transmittable, transferable, um, sendable, receivable, all the abols, it is fully able, right? Bitcoin is fully able. It is the fully able cryptocurrency. It's the first one of its kind. And that's why it has gained such a market share because, well, it's been around reliably for more than 99% of the time, right? Like 99.6% or 99.7 or some huge number of time. It was down very, very short period of time for network related issues, network upgrade related issues. Um, you know, in the very, very early days, but uh, since then it has never been down and it just continues to run, doesn't care, doesn't, you know, it's based on math. It does not need anything to run other than the network that powers it, right? And um, you don't need, you know, voting special groups and you don't need, uh, you know, is, is it consensus driven? Yes. But do you need uh, some special democratic organization to run it or some special shareholders or some special people at the top of a pyramid or something like that or a group? No, you don't need any of that. That's the beauty of Bitcoin. It's completely open source. And that's why people call it the people's coin, right? It's made by the people, whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is, if he's you know, clearly isn't some government, right? Clearly isn't some centralized organization that's openly saying they did it. If it was created by government or an organ or some other organization, they clearly have not come out and stated it. And so far, the only people that have come out and claimed to be it have all been basically demonstrated to be fraudulent um, or liars or just misspoke or misunderstood or I don't know what, but clearly you know, nobody knows who Satoshi is. And that's frankly for the better of crypto. Um, people say, you know, well, what about the problem with uh, having so much of the crypto in Satoshi's wallets? You've got like a million of them out of 21 million. That's clearly a problem. Is it though? If that, was, if that money never moves and Satoshi's, you know, as the years go by, the likelihood of Satoshi ever reappearing are clearly getting smaller and smaller. So it's just a chunk of Bitcoin that will never move. But there's millions of other coins also that will never move because they're stuck. Nobody knows what the keys are, right? Um, so it's not an impediment, right? And also, everyone's always worried about the Bitcoins being lost. You know that other cryptocurrencies get lost too, all the time. Um, money gets lost and people lose their money. And that happens a lot in fiat. It happens in crypto and expect it to happen in any form of assets that you can think of. Uh, there is always loss. That's part of life. There's gains and loss, right? Even if you're trading it, you should know that. Um, so, Again, cryptocurrency enables you as a marketer, right, to be able to market through wallets, um, to have, you know, some relations with wallet builders, um, to power, you know, to power web applications, for example, with um, a Bitcoin wallet type of uh, exchange system where you can let people buy and sell products on your website with Bitcoin, right? That's obviously been happening since pretty much uh, since the Bitcoin pizzas, uh, the, the famous, you know, 20,000 Bitcoins for pizza um, event that happened uh, way back in the, you know, in the very early days around 2000. 11 was it? Well, 2010? Yeah, something like that. Uh, for the pizza, um, Laszlo Horvath, remember he, he bought those pizzas. And, and, and since then, okay, that was done, you know, that was a purchase done basically by, I think, email or something like that. Um, but there have been obviously web apps and everything else developed that let you buy you know, in shops online. Um, that let you use Bitcoin. And one of the reasons people, again, they refuse to, to accept Bitcoin is because the volatility. Well, if you're selling products with, you know, and you're accepting Bitcoin, um, and you have a big picture view of what's going on, there's a very high chance that that Bitcoin will be worth more in a year, two years, three years. 
Right? You could also convert it immediately if you're not comfortable hoarding Bitcoin for some bizarre reason. Um, but you know, but if your company just wants to collect crypto and convert it to fiat, that is clearly possible. There are plenty of wallets and exchanges that let you do that. Um, and you can, you know, obviously, uh, you know, set up a system on your website or in your app uh, that lets you automatically convert the Bitcoin that you receive to other currencies. Um, <clears throat> I would, uh, I would caution though that people who are marketing crypto should ask themselves: Do I really want to get rid of the crypto that I'm hoarding as I'm marketing stuff, um, or? Do I want to maybe at least keep a healthy portion of it and, um, you know, convert the rest to whatever else I want it to be in? Um, ask yourself that if you're a small business owner, a medium-sized business owner, or even if you work in a huge company, right? If you guys are collecting Bitcoin right now, what's your end game? Ah, Friday morning coffee. No, um, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. I just had a, a dry throat there. I had to make sure I got some liquids in there. Um, ask yourself, what is your end game with Bitcoin, right? Are you holding it to, you know, till it reaches the all-time highs again? Or are you holding it till, are you trying to short, you know, are you, are you trying to hold it till it gets a million dollars? Or what is a crazy fantasy number people constantly throw out? Are you one of those, you know, Kool-Aid people that just, like believes Bitcoin will hit insane numbers? Or are you taking a more pragmatic approach and saying, well, look, over time the asset goes up and as long as our business is able to collect this and the asset value keeps going up over time, um, yeah, it's worth having Bitcoin as a form of currency we accept. Now, does that mean that you can't also put in a smart system that sees that when the price you know, drops by a certain amount, then you automatically convert your fiat? And if it doesn't, if it's going up, then you keep the crypto? Um, sure. Here's the other thing, though. Um, as Bitcoin goes up in value, right, some people will be more hesitant to use it, as we've discussed earlier in this episode, right? We've seen 12 million, 13 million wallets with Bitcoin unmoved in the past year. So a lot of people like to have it and hold it, but not spend it. But of course, many of those people who have those wallets that haven't moved Bitcoin, uh, a lot of that is because they have more than one wallet, right? Many people have more than one wallet, right? And that, that's one of the things about keeping your private keys, right? Everyone says, oh yeah, just keep your private, remember your private keys. Yeah, what if you keep 10 different wallets, right? 100, 1,000, whatever it is you keep. You gonna remember all those private keys? No, right? That's pretty hard. Unless you're some true savant and you can remember everything with a perfect photographic memory, the likelihood is something like a hardware wallet or a software wallet or at least a paper wallet is going to, you know, help you to uh, gain access to your crypto when you want it or when you need it. And... Um, that is a very important thing to consider that there are millions of you, you know, crypto wallets that have been created that don't move any Bitcoin, that have Bitcoin in them. But there's also millions more wallets that do have crypto in them and they do move their Bitcoin around. Um, it's not as if it's a very large number, obviously. Uh, Bitcoin ad adoption has not taken off at the rates that the dreamers would have sold you five and ten years ago, but it has become a kind of normalized, well, currency or asset class, right? It is a, it's considered basically a, a new asset class, and it does not have any peers in terms of things that are like it exactly. Um, because it is a new asset class, right? But it can be compared here and there to different things, and people make those comparisons all the time. And the point is that by becoming a normalized asset class, and by becoming actual currency over time, with the adoption of more people with more wallets, um, you will see, actually, people using not just Bitcoin, but other cryptocurrencies, but even Bitcoin itself, Right? If people start earning in Bitcoin more, and there are some that do, um, 
if you know if people start transacting more in Bitcoin, even for just the higher ticket items that they already use Bitcoin for, but just on a larger volume, like right now you can already buy houses and cars and things like that with Bitcoin, and people do because very often they get a discount when they buy the Bitcoin. Think about that for a second. Why is a merchant offering a discount with the Bitcoin, right? Why do you offer discounts with Bitcoin, which I hope you do, right? Um, and there are many ways to do it where you won't even lose money because Bitcoin is, you know, where <laughs> exactly? Um, Bitcoin is not entirely regulated, in fact, at all, really. The only regulations that are imposed upon it are local to, you know, relevant to jurisdictions, not relevant to the Bitcoin protocol. Bitcoin protocol does not care about the regulations. It just doesn't care. And it will not, you know, care about them. It's not built to recognize them. It's built to work in precisely against that system. So that system trying to control it is kind of hilarious, but at the same time, very serious, right? And so as a marketer, you have to position your brand or product in such a way that you are in line with the rules and regulations that are definitely coming, but that at the same time, you exploit the full advantages of having a cryptocurrency system in your back pocket, essentially, or front and center in your tool set of your marketing. Um, and again, the reason to go with Bitcoin and the reason that I promote Bitcoin and my market Bitcoin, and I do all kinds of marketing for specifically Bitcoin, even though there's no return to me directly creating content for Bitcoin. You know, there's no, like they say, no Bitcoin corporation headquarters. Well, Bitcoin corporate headquarters uh, hasn't sent me a check yet, but if they do, or if they haven't sent me a crypto or whatever, if they send me a Bitcoin, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. But I make the content because I think it's important that the community right, has information about how to market cryptocurrencies, right? You need to know what forms to go on, you need to know what tools to use, you need to know which cryptos to use. Well, as a marketer, again, not financial advice, but as a marketer, I am giving you my marketing advice, which is my opinion, uh, and it is based a lot on data, okay? <laughs> I look at this data all the time, and my clients know this, and if you're one of them, you know you can look at the data anytime. Um, and, uh, it is very clear Bitcoin is the currency in the crypto space to market with because it has strong brand recognition because it is open source and because it doesn't have a figurehead at the top. That is exactly why the people who love it the most love it as much as they do. Right, that's one of the many reasons. That is a key reason. It is critical to understand that. If you fail to understand that, you fail to understand Bitcoin. Um, you need to approach it as a true organic being. It is a true organic thing, right? It is created by an anonymous, pseudonymous entity. It is maintained by people all over the world who don't necessarily know or like or get along with each other. Right? But they maintain it collaboratively because that's how the protocol is designed. Right? It is a flash of brilliance in an ocean of darkness, right? the financial system. And Bitcoin is that powerful tool that gives the average person all of those capabilities that they want so very much. And so if you market something in this space, be cognizant of that. You know, if you're marketing to the bankers and the traditional financial systems through crypto, great. Go the old tried and true route. See how that works for you. Know, for you. Maybe that works for you know, a while still because they're used to that. They're programmed for that. And that's what they want. Right? They want to hear things that are more conservative and rules-based and regulation-driven and everything else. And, they want to give up control to other people so that they don't have to worry about things, right? Um, but in the crypto space, the true crypto space, right? not just the early pioneers, but the people who really love it, even who come along now, once they discover it and they're like, what? I get to have financial freedom, like essentially control my own actual wealth and nobody else can mess with it? 
yes, please sign me up. Like, right? That's how a lot of people react to it. Those people are the heart and soul of anything you're marketing in crypto on a B2C level or even a B2B2C level or even frankly on a B2B level, again, as long as you're not marketing to huge you know, entities and institutions and financial organizations and governments and things like that. But they want all the rules stuff because that's, that's what gets them the power they have. That's how they keep their power, right? And Bitcoin is designed to take it away from them. Not in so many words, but in much more beautiful language, math, right? Um, Bitcoin is designed to work without the need for all those middlemen and hacks and government bureaucrats and people who are basically stealing your wealth with the power of the gun, right? Um, and I'm not saying this to be a anti-government, libertarian, crazy conspiracy, all that. I'm not, okay? I'm just saying for those who love Bitcoin, these are the reasons, right? That is a critical reason, right? People are sick and tired of the existing system. They look for a solution that is different. And Bitcoin is actually that, right? You, there may be a lot of drawbacks with Bitcoin, but there's a huge amount of advantages with it. And the fact that it's not centrally controlled makes it so. In fact, don't believe me, right? The proof is that you've got things like Secretary Mnuchin, right? Uh, Treasury, U.S. Secretary uh, of the Treasury, <clears throat> Mr. Mnuchin, who, uh, I mean, this man is the epitome of somebody who benefits from the traditional fiat system and will do everything in his power to keep power and lie to citizens, um, you know, without any shame. Right, and saying and claiming that crypto is used largely for criminal activity and fiat is not ever used for fiat for criminal activity, or it's hardly ever used for criminal activity. Right, there's hardly ever any laundering, there's hardly ever any criminal activity. I mean, if you watch that clip on CNBC with Brian Kelly, the expressions on Brian Kelly's face speak volumes about what the response that people have. Right, not just him, but to hear the U.S. Secretary Treasurer, Treasury. I mean, I know his job is to cheerlead the dollar, but when it goes that far, right? When you caught that guy saying that Bitcoin is a criminal thing and fiat is, you know, clean as a whistle and has never been used in history for laundering money. I mean, it's it, it's just insane. Right? It's just insane. All right, um, but that's where we are. Because the political class has finally gotten wind of Bitcoin in the last couple of years, ever since it you know had those all-time highs back in 2017, right? And they've gotten, they've taken notice of it, and now they want their share of it, right? And the only way for them to do that is to steal it through the law. So they're coming for it, right? With all their guns blazing. And that means if you're marketing something in crypto, you need to be prepared for that. Be ready, the rules are coming. Don't be scared of that in general. If you're working or living in an industrial society, that should not be a problem. Eventually, the rules will normalize. But will there be chaos and will there be a little bit of insanity regarding the rules and regulations for, for some years until that's settled down? In all likelihood, yes. Because, again, we're talking about government people trying to grapple a new technology, relatively, for them it's new, um, and they're not good at understanding technology. Right? They're, they're, they're horrible. They don't care about the technology. They just care about the tax revenue. So they want to figure out how much they can get away with taxing, essentially, and restricting Bitcoin. That's, that's their end game, right? Which is why I bring you back to what is your end game? Think about that. Um, I know this video has been a bit long, and that's the way it is sometimes. I just <laughs> I have a lot to say about Bitcoin. Um, but I want you to be aware of the different ways that Bitcoin can help you to market on a bigger picture than just, you know, hey, use this video, hey, use that video, or check out this you know, social media site. 
Think of the bigger concepts, the regulations. You know, look at the negative impact we've had from GDPR. You remember I railed about GDPR a couple years ago? It was it a year or two ago in the summer about how it would be bad for business? And tell me, how much better is your web surfing experience now that you have to click accept and agree on every single site you go to every single time you go there? On that huge ridiculous banner that tells you that they use cookies which everybody in the world knows websites use cookies because that's how websites run. It's really hard to have a very effective, dynamic website full of updated information all the time without any cookies at all, right? Especially if you allow users to log in and stuff. So um, the whole concept of GDPR is just another classic example of dunderheaded governments bumbling, interfering with awesome technology, the web protocol, right? Which did not ever need anyone to be told that there are cookies on this site. And by the way, it's there were already cookie notifications. There were cookie notifications in your browser. There's terms and policies and cookie notifications um, at the bottom of pretty much every legit website you've ever seen, even the not legit ones. Every WordPress site has that kind of stuff even built in as a default from, you know, from before there was GDPR, they had a privacy page default with all the terms and everything else that you could review and publish. Like, Cookies are just part of the web. And, you know, in that similar vein, when government tried to regulate the use of cookies, they just made the web worse, right? Just like with the V chip in the 90s, they made, they made, they practically made the experience of interactive TV, what, what, it, what, what it would have been, um, much worse, right? By adding a video chip, a violence chip, so to speak, into your television. When government interferes with technology, they just make it worse. Now, government sponsors technology. Government-funded research is what drives the entire, you know, world economy forward, really. But it's not. But that's government-funded research. That's not government policy on technology that other people invented. Right? Those are completely different things. Um, so, the government wants to take its piece of Bitcoin, right? no matter what, and not just the US government, all governments, right? Which means as a marketer, you need to think about the rules and regulations. And that, again, is the underlying over, overarching bigger picture message of this, which is make use of crypto while you still can, as much as you can while it's unregulated. And when it becomes regulated increasingly so, make sure you don't fall behind on keeping up with the regulations because while they may seem dry and boring, you need to make sure that you adhere to them. Otherwise, you know, bad things can happen. Um, and also, right, if you set it up correctly, if you are aware of all the regulations, guess what else you're aware of? If you're a smart marketer and you run a smart business, you're aware of the loopholes. And you should take advantage of them and you should exploit them to your benefit. You know why? Because they were created for precisely that reason. If you don't take advantage of them, you are adding risk to your business unnecessarily. You are acting irresponsibly for your business. And if you are fiduciarily responsible for your business, or at least for the marketing for the business, then you must take advantage of those exploits. And they are plentiful. I'm not going to go over every single one of them in this video. I want to just remind you, they are there. And they are there for you to take advantage of. So don't miss out on that. If you need to know what those exploits are, I will do another video on that um, coming up. But there's already content. You can see videos about different exploits you can use as a marketer. Check out my video on uh, crypto power tools. Check out any of the different uh, crypto marketing videos that I posted uh, that explain to you how to exploit them. This is the big picture and why you should be using Bitcoin, not just any cryptocurrency, but specifically, first and foremost, Bitcoin to market, right? It will help your currency as well, even if you're marketing another one, right? Rising tides lift all ships and Bitcoin is the rising tide. Um, it doesn't matter if the price action goes up or down as a marketer. It matters that there's mass adoption and that there's, you know, utility and that there's store of value and that it's uncensorable and divisible and portable and everything else. So that's going to do it. Um, again, I know a bit of a long video, but hey, there you go. Um, 
if you've enjoyed this, hey, you know what to do. Uh, and until next time, folks, take care.